A lot of people are talking about CRISPR. You might have heard about the Chinese scientist who's now in jail for using CRISPR to create genetically modified babies. Or maybe you heard the rumor that JLo is doing a new bioterror CRISPR movie. To understand what was really going on, I took a course at the National Institute of Health on how to use CRISPR. The first step my instructor taught me was finding a target. If you target myostatin, you could produce a child like this with huge bulging muscles. He actually showed us this video. It's of a Romanian child who naturally has a mutation that gives him different abilities. There's a lot of different metaphors that people are using to understand how CRISPR works on DNA. The idea of editing implies that you can just change the DNA base pairs letter by letter at your whim. If you make a mistake, go back and fix it. But it's not that easy. The idea of gene surgery signals that there could be a risk. When a surgeon slips and makes an unintended cut, that leaves an injury. I have another metaphor that I'd like to introduce, the Reaper drone. You give the drone some coordinates, it can take out a target. But sometimes the missile hits the wedding party. Other times the drone goes astray and hits an un unintended target somewhere else. CRISPR's like that. It can produce unintended damage far away from the place that you were trying to hit. Ultimately, I think technical language describes it best. CRISPR produces targeted mutagenesis. In other words, CRISPR makes mutants. There's a lot of mutants in popular culture, like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, that imply that mutation is just whimsical possibility. But we also know that some mutations lead to cancer. 20 years ago, this bunny was created, Alba, by an artist, and we could do the same thing with people. But other things are impossible. If you look at the abilities of storm to summon the weather or shoot lightning out of the sky, we can't do that. That's just pure science fiction. Really what we're seeing are trade-offs. If you target the gene for myostatin, you might get a child with huge bulging muscles, but you're also likely to get a child with heart problems and smaller organs. But really at its heart, CRISPR is a story of ambivalence. Should we create new genetically modified children? Should we use this tool to change our own DNA? I think the future is really up for grabs and we need to tell better, more imaginative stories about both the ways that this can go wrong, but also the new promising things that we can explore as a species.